In today's lecture, we are talking about the dermatophytes, the fungus which is mislabeled a worm, ringworm, uh, not actually a worm at all. Uh, these fungi cause cutaneous and superficial infections in people and a wide variety of animals. Our most important dermatophyte species fall within the microsporum and trichophyte genera. These are all septate fungi, which means that the hyphae have these little divisions which you can see within them. Our microsporum have characteristic boat-shaped macroconidia, while our trichophyton have sort of elongated cigar-shaped macroconidia. These organisms utilize keratin for growth, which is why we find them in skin and hair, and they're relatively slow-growing in vitro. So microsporum Microsporum canis typically takes three to five days to grow, while trichophyte and varicosum takes one to two weeks. All of our dermatophytes are biocontainment level two. In this beautiful image here, you can see Microsporum canis with the very classical boat-shaped macroconidia. And in this organism here, on the right, we can see our classical cigar-shaped macroconidia associated with trichophyton. On the left, we can see the trichophyton hyphae uh, with these septa. So you can see here these divisions uh, within the fungal structures. Our dermatophytes can be described as geophilic or zoophilic. So our geophilic organisms are free living saprophytes that we find in the soil. A really good example of these is Microsporum gypsum. While our zoophiles are adapted to surviving on host skin. These really prefer to be host associated. So Microsporum canis um, deceptively is most commonly found in cats, while trichophyte and varicosum is one that we associate with cattle. Depending on the species, transmission can be either animal to animal, animal to human, or between people. Most often we see infections when we have direct contact with infected hair or contaminated environment. Fleas have also been shown to play the role of a mechanical vector in transmitting these organisms between hosts. The infectious dose for our dermatophytes is unknown, but it's thought to be around 100 spores. We have many, many, many species of dermatophytes. So within the genus Trichophyton, there are 252 species. Microsporum, we have 106. And Epidermophyton, there are 47. I'm not going to discuss virulence factors associated with the dermatophytes, but rather I thought I would describe the pathogenesis of these infections. So infective arthrospores germinate once they adhere to some sort of keratinized structure. With trauma, moisture, or maceration of the skin, we get facilitation of infection, so it makes it easier for the organisms to invade. They produce um, keratin hydrolyzing enzymes that allow them to invade more deeply into the skin, hair, and feathers. And the incubation period from first infection through to clinical signs is one to three weeks. The host inflammatory response is what actually leads to the, the characteristic lesions. So this classical ringworm type appearance is actually an inflammatory lesion rather than a circular proliferation of the organism itself. It isn't a large colony of fungus, it's actually the host inflammation that leads to that lesion. Frequently, these lesions are also alopecic, so we get hair loss uh, at the site of infection. Clinical disease is more common in wet, humid climates, so maybe this bodes well for us here in cold and dry Saskatchewan. Dermatophytes can affect a wide variety of animals, including, of course, people. In dogs, most commonly, we see Microsporum canis, Trichophyton mantigraphytes, and Trichophyton gypsum. In cats, 90% of infections are due to Microsporum canis, which you can again see over here on the right with these lovely boat-shaped macroconidia. In horses, we see Trichophyton equinum. In cattle, Trichophyton varicosum. In pigs, Trichophyton mentigraphytes and Microsporum nanum. And in people, there's a variety of species that are involved, depending on the location of the lesions. In dogs, ringworm is not associated with a pathognomonic set of clinical signs. Lesions are typically foci of alopecia. We can have follicular papules, scales, crusts. Um, there may be a central area of pigmentation in the lesions. And in some cases, it can look quite similar to deep pyoderma. Paritis is variable, so they may or may not be itchy. 
and the lesions can be either localized or generalized, occurring over large portions of the body. In cases where we do have generalized lesions, this should really prompt an investigation into underlying causes of disease. What's going on in this dog that makes it susceptible to such a serious infection? Does it perhaps have an immunosuppressive condition? In these images here, we can see two dogs affected with dermatophytosis. On the left, we have a trichophyton-associated lesion. On the nose, you can see we have some alopecia, there's hair loss. And on the right, we have alopecia associated with a microsporum canis lesion. Here we have a dog which is much more severely affected. You can see all over the head and neck we have hair loss and these uh, large inflammatory lesions over the muzzle. Cytologically, the inflammation associated with these lesions was ca characterized as pyogranulomatous, and there may be a secondary bacterial infection uh, component to this dog's disease as well. In cats, we have a wide spectrum of clinical presentations, um, and it oftentimes mimics other dermatological conditions. Um, most common, they are inapparent, they're silent infections, we have no idea that a cat uh, actually has the organism. The lesions, when present, may be focal or multifocal, there may or may not be scaling or crusting, they may or may not be puritic. When we do have lesions, erythema and scaling of the outer pinna, so the outside of the ear, um, are the most common presentations. In kittens, um, erythema and scalding is perhaps more common um, on the muzzle, the ear, the face, and the forelegs. In some cats, we can also see granulomatous dermatitis, which is unfortunately associated with a poor prognosis. These cats oftentimes have ulcerated nodules, and we see this when we have generalized infection. So cats that probably have some underlying condition that's predisposing them to these severe infections. On the left here, we can see a cat with dermatophytosis. There's alopecia and erythema associated with this microsporum canis infection. And then on the right, we have a cat with relatively small crusting lesions on the nose. Um, so ringworm can be quite variable in its presentation. One thing that's really interesting about microsporum canis is that 50% of strains fluoresce under UV light. And so shining a woods lamp on an animal who you suspect is having uh, dermatophytosis can be a useful way to rule in this diagnosis. If they glow, it tells you probably you have a microsporum canis infection. If they don't glow, it doesn't rule it out. I've put a link above to a video showing a cat with ringworm um, where there's a woods lamp shining on it and you can see fluorescence in the hair. In both cats and dogs, ringworm infections are generally self-limiting, so they usually go away on their own. Management of these infections involves clipping the hair coat. Um, you want to prevent additional contamination of the environment, so removing the hairs where those uh, fungal organisms are growing and discarding them. Topical therapy is also possible. Um, whole body shampooing and dips are um, supposedly the most effective. Systemic therapy can also be tried, so systemic antifungals. And one of the most important things is actually decontaminating the environment. So the spores of our microsporum and trichophyton species can persist for long periods of time. And so you need to remove soft pet surfaces, so beds and blankets, um, ideally disinfecting those with uh, bleach or simply discarding them. Purchasing a new vacuum that can be used to clean the house and then discarding it so that the vacuum itself doesn't sort of mechanically vector uh, the organism around. Um, and then bleach disinfection of non-pore surfaces. So it can be quite an involved uh, process and client compliance and client ability to actually perform these decontamination measures may be limited. Mm -hmm.